What's up you guys, hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Now haunted houses aren't it, whether it's Halloween or reality, it's a hard no from me fam. My house is where I live in complete comfort. I can't be living there walking on eggshells waiting for the next time ghosty wants to throw half my cutlery across the kitchen. Like at least pay rent if you want to act up like that. Seriously. But of course many families don't just willingly move into a haunted house, it just kind of happens. So here are the top 10 families who lived in real haunted houses. Starting off with number 10 are the double suicides. Now this one was shared by Reddit user Suspicious Palm Tree, who said she lived in a house that was built back in the 1800s. Now being built at the time that it was, it survived through both world wars and a lot more one of which being the previous owner's two sons committing suicide inside of it. When the user and her family moved in, they noticed strange happenings straight away. Their dog and parrots would randomly wake up from a nap and follow something with their heads like some entity was walking around. Every animal's head was following the same pattern, so clearly they were all looking at the same thing. The user's brother would never sleep in his room growing up because he claimed he kept hearing people talk to him. The user herself had her room in the attic and would have to pass through the empty second second floor where the emotion activated lights. But the lights would randomly just turn on during the middle of the night despite no human being around at all. I mean, we're seeing a pattern. Two suicides. Coming in at number 9 is The Overdose. Now this one was shared anonymously on Thought Catalog and it said that the user's sister and her daughter moved into a townhouse apartment complex when the daughter was about 4 years old. Now the night they moved in, the mum ran into her daughter's room after hearing her screaming about a man who was in her room yelling at her. There was no man there despite the mum literally searching everywhere. Windows, doors, everything was locked so the mum put her to sleep and went back to her room. The same thing continued to happen the next few days and soon the daughter stopped sleeping there altogether and wouldn't even go into that room. One day while the two were at the playground, the mum started talking to another mum who lived at the complex and she started talking about how scary it was that the person living in the apartment before the user's sister had died of a heroin overdose and she had no idea that had even happened. After doing some more research, the mum found out the guy's bedroom was where her daughter's room was, so I mean go figure, the man yelling. She managed to find a picture of him on his obituary and when the daughter saw the photo, she ran out of the room screaming saying that was the man. At number 8 we have the Colonial House. This one was shared by Xco on Reddit who said she used to live with three of her friends at this huge 1840s colonial house that had like 80 plus acres of state wildlife property around it. We're talking super bougie and super colonial. Now everyone's bedrooms lined the upstairs hall and it was on their third night in the house where things got weird. Now the user heard her doorknob rattle like someone was messing around with it and then she heard it happen to the door next to hers and so on. The next morning she was confronted and asked why she was messing with the logs because the other housemates had already said they hadn't touched them but neither had the user. Brushing off, the housemates ended up doing nothing about it. A week later, the user felt this intense urge to get out of bed. She laid still in bed contemplating if a noise had woken her up or something but at 3am she eventually ventured out of her bedroom and she saw all her roommates leave their rooms and come out at the exact same time as her, all claiming they felt this huge urge to leave their beds. That's a bit creepy, I'm not gonna lie. Just imagine at 3 a.m. everyone just leaves their room at the same time. That's some cult ass right there. Filling on the seventh slot is The Figure. This one's from Redditor Den Home 2 who said when he was around 9 or 10 he was living with his dad. The place they had was this terrace house built sometime in the 1800s and he noticed weird things happening when no one else was in the house. Why are all these haunted houses made in the 1800s? I feel like that wasn't a good time for anyone. Now in terms of strange happenings, I'm talking footsteps above them when both were in the same room downstairs. One night the user was in bed and woke up realizing their bedroom door was open despite always closing it before they slept. When his eyes focused, he suddenly saw this 7 foot tall shadow figure standing at the end of his bed just watching him. When the figure realized the user was looking back at him, it seemed to literally disintegrate into the floor and the door just closed by itself. Who dat no? Now at number 6 is The Skeptic. This one was shared by Reddit user Tick Leon, who said he lives in a house that was haunted for about 5 years. Before moving in he was told about the paranormal activity that occurred in the house but he sort of just brushed it off. Now the user never saw a full apparition of a ghost right in front of him but so many things happen that he found very hard to rationalize to himself. Like hearing the sound of children laughing or knocking on the doors despite him having no kids. Light bulbs smashing onto the ground because they had somehow removed themselves from their metal bases. 
is, furniture moving from one side to the room to the literal middle and so forth. But that's all cliche ghost stuff that we've heard before. He said what bothered him was that on the same day every year two parts of the house would stink of the smell of something burning. You could just tell, you know when you step into an area that smells horrible and then you step out and you're like oh, doesn't smell so bad over here. He finished his reddit post by saying hey at least no dead girls coming out of TVs. Lol, I mean yes it could be worse, you are right there, you're not wrong. Y'all yeah, speaking facts. Coming in at number five are the Lynches. Now the time was around the mid 1800s, and the wealthy Luce Chase Sprague had lost her fortune and died penniless at the Sprague Mansion located on Cranston Street, Rhode Island. Fast forward to 1967, Robert and Viola Lynch decided to move into the 28 bedroom house that came with its own doll room, which I don't know why they didn't get rid of, but anyway. That's very creepy. Ghostly things would happen to the couple, their blankets would be pulled and thrown off them in the middle of the night. They'd wake up with furniture knocked over to the side and rooms with their lights on that hadn't been used in a while. Cause let's face it, they do have 28 rooms, like let's be real, not all of them are in use. The couple decided to use a Ouija board to try and calm whatever was in the house and they contacted an entity that spelled out tell my story. Now in a plot twist turn of events, the entity was the ghost of a massa Sprague whose murdered bludgeoned body was found near the house back in 1843. The family ended up moving away because they were like, screw that. But paranormal experts who've investigated their house since have physically seen the doll's eyes in that room moving. Unexplained lights have also been found, so I mean, let's let's just not move into the Sprague Mansion, shall we? At number four is the McPike Mansion. Alton, Illinois has been dubbed one of the most haunted places in the whole of America. In it, we find the 16 bedroom McPike Mansion built by Henry McPike for his family back in 1869. Come the 1900s, the house was sold to Paul Leichinger, who used to rent the room out to different boarders, the Airbnbs of yore. Now, either way, he was not given a five star rating because multiple boarders complained about hearing the sounds of children talking and laughing together despite children not even being in the vicinity. When Paul finally died, the mansion sat empty for 50 years before Sharon and George Ludke bought it as a passion project. But within days of moving in, Sharon noticed this ghost man that would stare at her through the window while she was out gardening. The couple also caught floating orbs on camera and doors opening on their own. Paranormal investigators claim the most active room in the house is the wine cellar. I mean at least the afterlife know how to have a good time. I'll give them that. Filling at number 3 slot is The Man. This one comes from Rag X Doll on Reddit who said her father in law died in her house long before her son was born so sadly they never had a chance to meet. After he was born though there'd be many nights where she'd hear him laughing to himself which didn't really strike her as odd since kids literally get amused by anything. One day though she was just hanging up family pictures around the house and of course her father in law was in quite a few of them. When her son finally saw them he asked oh mommy why do you have a picture of the man that comes and plays with me at night. Mind you they'd never met and he'd never seen a picture of him before. That's kind of cute though that like the father in law is just like the ghost of him just playing with his like grandson. That's cute. Now at number two are the husbands. Now, this one was shared by reddit user I most likely need help and I mean don't we all my friend, don't we all. Either way they shared that their dad decided to buy a house that came with its fair share of baggage let's just say. The woman who lived there before them had two husbands die on her in the house. The first hung himself in the garage whilst the second died in bed in the basement. Now unfortunately the user's bedroom was also in the basement and she claimed that she felt like she was being watched 24-7. The basement also had a secret storage room behind a bookshelf that had a locking latch on it yet every morning she'd find it open. It happened so frequently that the user would wake up in the middle of the night to lock it and still find it open the next morning. The garage was no different. The user would see light coming from under the door but when she opened it it would be pitch black. So where's this light coming from? The place was airtight yet she'd still see the blades that were hanging from the roof just clangled together. Clangled? Did I just make a word up? They were clanging together, despite no draft coming in. And finally, at number one is the little girl. Now this one's from Naya, who said her and her family moved from the UK to an old beat up house in the US. And of course, all the regular things happen, like seeing bright lights in random places around the house, hearing footsteps, etc. When Naya was six years old, this little girl started waking her up every night, and she would do it by dancing on her chest of drawers. Now Naya was terrified, her mum thought she was dreaming or joking, like it was going 
ass up at this point. People working on the house even complain about their tools being moved around and the feeling of being watched. One night, a year after they moved in, one of Naya's sister's friends came over for a sleepover and she woke up screaming, claiming a little girl had pulled her off the bed and she literally left the house at 4 a.m. and refused to ever come back. After doing some digging, her mum found out that a little girl had died of asthma in the house. And that is it for today's video, guys. I'm so thankful I don't live in a haunted apartment. Although sometimes when it's nighttime and I'm alone and I hear the AC hitting the curtains, I'm like, oh, oh, oh who's in my house? Get out of my house. Either way, let me know what you guys thought in the comments below. As always, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. A haunted heart. Yeah. <laughs> Where they at? No. Who that no? <laughs> Areas, because it was like a, it was like a woof, and it's gone. Okay, that was a bad. <laughs> now in the, in, now in a plot tip. Now in a plot. No. Sorry, my nose is blocked.